All right. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to our May Training Tuesday event for OU Campus. Today's talking or today's topic is understanding page template components. We'll be taking a look at basic pieces that make up templates as well as showing you how to build your own. During the presentation, all participants will be in a listen-only mode as the session is being recorded. If you have a question during the presentation, you may submit it, on, you may submit it online by clicking on the Q&A tab located on the right-hand side of your screen. Make sure it's in the Q&A tab and not chat so we have your email address and question in case your question warrants a follow-up reply. Simply type your question into the dialog box at the bottom of the screen and send. We will attempt to address your questions during the presentation. After, after the formal presentation has ended, we will review and answer all remaining questions. Your presenter today is Brandon Shireman, software trainer at Omni Update. Brandon, I'll hand it over to you. Thanks, Erica. Appreciate it. Um, hey, welcome everybody. We are super looking, I am super looking forward to kind of being back in the saddle. It's been quite a while since I've uh, led a Training Tuesday. Um, but looking forward to today's topic. Um, we are going to be talking today about kind of understanding when we're talking about templates inside of OU Campus, um, that's kind of what we're going to be diving into today. Um, there's a bunch of different things that templates can kind of mean, and I want to make sure we're kind of being clear about that. And I also want to walk you through some examples for, um, you know, what we can do with uh, the template capabilities inside of OU Campus. So um, let's go ahead and just talk about our agenda for today. We're going to be talking, you know, what is a template in the first place? I mentioned that there's kind of a couple different understandings of what a template can mean. Um, we'll be covering what those are today. Um, we're going to be looking at uh, the template files within OU Campus and uh, taking a deeper look at them. Then we're going to put all those things together, take our understandings of these individual files and see how they relate to the big picture of ultimately creating more stuff inside of OU Campus. Um, and then, of course, most of that knowledge is going to be done during a live demonstration. We'll make a couple templates increasing in their complexity um, to kind of run the gamut between the simplest of simple all the way up to uh, all the way up to the hardest or <laughs> um, most confusing or most advanced type of templates. And of course, we'll end up with a Q&A as well. But as Erica said in the introduction, if you guys do have any questions. Um, feel free to put them in the Q&A tab inside of the WebEx window. I'll read out your question and answer it as we go if it, you know, is related to what we're covering at that exact moment. But of course, if you feel like your question just is a more general one and you want to save it till the end, um, then you can, of course, just do that as well. So. Let's go ahead and dive into it. What are templates anyways? <laughs> when we talk about templates, not only just in OU Campus, but just kind of the idea of a template, um, it can kind of have a couple meanings. Um, the primary two that I want to draw a distinction between today are calling a template as in like a page type on your site. So, you know, everyone in, you know, your websites, you have different types of pages. You know, you've got your landing pages, you've got your interior page, maybe you've got a faculty profile page, maybe it's a news listing page, a blog page. All of those different page types have a different structure, perhaps they have slightly different styling, um, and all of that sort of stuff. Um, so. That's one way that some people can kind of refer to uh, templates. The other type of meaning that I want to talk about is the template as in the different items that you click when you click, or the different items that you can select from when you click the new button inside of OU Campus. So, you know, when you're inside of the pages list view, you got the big green new button, you click on that, and it gives you kind of a list of options that you can choose from in there. Now, most of those are related to your pages, but they're not necessarily referencing always one specific page type. Um, I know that in some examples, as we will actually see today, um, maybe I have multiple items inside of the new, uh, new content dialog box that all kind of end up actually going towards the same page type. I just maybe have some slight variations on what my interior page looks like, even though they're ultimately all interior pages. So, 
like I said, while these definitions are pretty similar, they're not always exactly the same. Um, the items that live within kind of that new content menu that show up when you click the new button, they can create more than just a web page. Um, so they're not necessarily only just for web pages. Um, what our focus is going to be on today is going to be specifically about the different items that show up when you click the new content uh, dialog box, how to create more of those, and um, what the capabilities are when it comes to actually uh, making them. So with that, that leads us into a discussion of how do we actually get those new items inside of that new content dialog box. Um, there are essentially three files that come into play in order to get us one of those. The first thing is just a simple image for a thumbnail. So of course, when you click on the new button, you have nice little thumbnails that have a title underneath them. Um, and obviously we need to create those thumbnail images. So that's our first, that's our first file that comes into play. The second thing is what we call a TCF or a template control file. This is essentially a text file that almost follows XML standards, but not exactly. It's just kind of meant to look similar to it. Um, but it's ultimately a text file that uh, will be triggered as soon as you click on that image thumbnail. And then the third file is what we call a TMPL, which is just a template file. This is another text file that will ultimately kind of become the foundation for whatever kind of new content we're creating, whether that's a web page or something else. So those are the three files that we'll be diving deeper into today, and we'll be creating a couple variations of them. So in order for those you know, files to be treated as more than just files that live on the staging server, they need to be placed in a specific directory, depending on what's been set up inside of OU Campus. Generally speaking, that uh, folder is going to be uh, the underscore resources slash OU slash templates folder. So, you know, because we want these to be treated as templates within OU campus, we want to put them in a folder called templates. Um, the system, uh, as long as it's set up appropriately, it was going to automatically recognize those files uh, as, you know, things that combine to create a template. And so from then on out, when you click on the new button, you should be able to see that file appearing. The only way that you might not see those files appearing when you click on the new button from there on out is template groups, which is another setting we have inside of OU Campus that um, kind of can adjust which templates we see uh, at a given time. So we'll be kind of looking at this sort of stuff, but this is really just kind of all the setup that you're doing inside of OU Campus. Let's talk a little bit more about what those last two files are, TCF and TMPL. Some of you on this call may be really familiar with them. Some of you might not be, and you might want to know a little bit more about what those things actually are. So let's first of all dive into the TCF. I don't feel like I need to explain the image thumbnail anymore. It's just an image, <laughs> nothing too special about those. Um, the TCF file, which we call a template control file, remember, um, has also been in the past referred to as the new page wizard inside of OU Campus. Basically, what this file is, is it's the form that prompts your users for basic information about the file you're about to create. So when you're working inside of OU Campus, you select one of your templates from the new content menu, and then you get this uh, form, looks like this, kind of in a dialog box inside of OU Campus. This file, or what you're seeing there, that's what is uh, created by our TCF. So every time you fill out one of these, you're entering data into a TCF file. Well, <laughs> I just realized TCF file is kind of redundant because the F in TCF already stands for file. So <laughs> anyways, just remember that, fun fact, the F in TCF stands for file. <laughs> um, so. Generally speaking, if we're using this to create a new web page, for example, um, some of this basic information that exists within the TCF is, you know, some real, real essentials. What's the file name going to be? Um, if you're making a web page, you know, maybe what's its page title, what's its meta description, um, and a bunch of other things. Hypothetically, you could put in a ton of information inside of this uh, inside of this file and users would be filling out a ton, in, a ton of information before the page is uh, ultimately created. But 
generally speaking, we like to try to keep these as minimal as possible. So there's as little time between you selecting a file or you selecting a template and getting a, a published or a, a file that's ready to be edited. So when we're talking about editing these TCFs, um, it's cre they're created and edited within a source code view. So we'll be looking in the source editor quite a bit today. And uh, one other thing that's really cool is that one TCF file, or one TCF, <laughs> um, can make multiple files with just one form. So, you know, many of you have the option to create a new section template inside of your site within OU Campus. A new section template, still ultimately you just fill out one of these uh, TCF forms, these new page wizards, um, but ultimately it gives you more than just a single page. It puts you know, it makes a, a single page, it makes a side navigation uh, file typically, maybe a couple other ancillary helper files and puts it all into one directory. And all of that's being controlled just through one TCF. So that's a, kind of a neat feature and we'll look at how that happens later on. So that's kind of all we need to know to get started with our TCFs. The second thing I wanna talk about is the TMPL. That's our third file that comes into play. The TMPL, TMPL is just short for template, and it's once again kind of a text file that's going to be edited and managed within the source code editor. What the TMPL is, is it's ultimately the building block for what our new file will become. So ultimately, depending on what type of file we're trying to make with this new template, the TCF could look totally different. Um, What's really cool about it is that um, the data that you entered inside of that new page wizard, that form, it gets added into the template file and essentially the specific information you're putting, such as file name and page title and all that sort of stuff, it gets entered into the appropriate locations inside of the TMPL and the combination of those two things is what gets you your file at the end of the day. So in the most common example, uh, when you're making a web page, the TMPL is going to look almost exactly like the PCF file that we're ultimately trying to make in the first place. Um, the only difference between a TMPL and a PCF in that example would be all of the hard-coded information that you would normally have inside of a PCF, such as things like what the actual page title of the page is gonna be and what the description is gonna be and some of that sort of stuff. It's uh, that stuff's not in there yet because, of course, we're waiting for that specific data to be added to the TMPL. Um, so, of course, we're not going to put it in the TMPL itself. So, um, that's pretty much it. A TMPL is going to still have the page parameters, the editable regions, all of that sort of stuff that looks like a PCF in the example of using a TMPL to create um, a web page. But, like I said, a TMPL doesn't have to make a web page. It could make anything we want. Ultimately, it's just gonna be the backbone for whatever file we're generating. So what I'm trying to say here is basically that just the TMPL structure is gonna vary very greatly depending on what you're actually trying to make at the end of the day. So we've kind of talked about all of these files uh, in, uh, in brief, kind of in, a, in their own self-contained understandings, but now let's just kind of put all of these things together. So- Before we- um... Sorry to interrupt. Before we go on, I have a question from uh, Kelly Bostick. Oh, and sure. She says, is there a listing of all the options we can include in the TCF? Yes, there is. Um, we will be looking at those actually when we're in the live demonstration. Our support site has a bunch of options uh, to show you basically all of the little tags and the attributes and things like that you can put inside of a TCF. So um, I'll highlight that once we get done with the PowerPoints. Um, but I'll also be explaining a lot of the common options as we go through the demo. But great question, thank you. Um, so yeah, what we're gonna do right now is I'm just gonna give you kind of two simple examples of kind of putting all of these files together. So we're gonna actually kind of work our way uh, kind of in reverse almost. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start with what our end result is trying to be. So in this simple abstract example, we're gonna go ahead and say that on the production server, our ultimate goal on our live site is we want to generate a new, just flat HTML file, right? And you know, in this example, we could honestly have whatever our end result be, whatever we want. Maybe it could be a text file, not an HTML file. So if we wanted just a flat HTML file and we didn't want it to be, you know, 
um, anything really too fancy. Ultimately, we could have on the staging server just the HTML file analog of it. So maybe we're just having a, a flat file that we just want to edit directly in the source code inside of OU Campus for whatever reason, and it's just a normal HTML file. So, you know, we publish it, and that puts it over to the production server. There's really nothing else that needs to happen. But ultimately, if we want to make more of those HTML files on the staging server, we have to make a template that allows us to do that. So what's going to happen is we're going to have uh, a TMPL that has the generic information for our, for our HTML file, but maybe it's just missing a couple key pieces, like what the page title is going to be or whatever. Um, so ultimately, the TMPL itself is going to be very similar in structure and content to the HTML, just to have, it'll have a couple pieces of generic information instead of specific information. Um, how do we get that generic information turned into specific information? We grab user data from the TCF, and then ultimately, how do we choose which TCF we want to use? It's just a matter of choosing uh, our template thumbnail image, which we've uploaded into the system as well. So really the way that it works ultimately when you're working inside of OU Campus, you click the new button, it's going to give you a list of thumbnails, you click the thumbnail, it's going to open up a form that is generated by our TCF, we fill out the form, the data from the form gets passed into the template file, our generic backbone, and then the combination of user data plus the generic backbone gives us our end result, and then we just edit it and publish it, and voila, now we have our new file. And this is kind of a more generic example. Um, those three files that we talked about today are all what we're going to be dealing with later on. But in this generic example, the HTML file that we're talking about here could be literally anything. It could be a simple text file. It could be a CSS file. It could be JavaScript. It doesn't ultimately really matter. What really matters is that the TMPL is just creating a file on the staging server, and then from there, that file is its own thing, and you can do whatever you want with it. So now let's take that kind of more generic example and use, uh, use a more common one that you guys might be a little more familiar with, how we actually create web pages inside of OU Campus nowadays, which is a little bit more complex. So still, at the end result, our, our, our goal at the end of the day is we want to create an HTML file that lives on the live site so people can actually go to the web page. So when we're inside OU Campus, how we generate that HTML is a little different. So now, instead of just have it being an HTML file on the staging server, we have it as a PCF. And the PCF is what contains all of the page-specific content. So, you know, all of our editable regions, um, any content that I'm adding to this page that's not on any other page, it's just the stuff that's making this page unique. And so we split that out away from everything else, and we put all of the other stuff, which includes styling, page layout, you know, how many columns, what my header looks like, all of that stuff, that's going to be controlled in a separate file called XSL. And basically, you have your page-specific content blending in with your uh, kind of your style and layout information, and the two things combined is what actually gives us HTML on the live site. Now, going back to the whole distinction between a template kind of being referred to as a, a, as a page type, you know, interior page, landing page, et cetera, what really controls what our page ultimately looks like is everything that's inside of this XSL. So when it comes to talking about how do I make more page layouts that look different from other page layouts that I already have inside of my site, it's a matter of modifying XSL to do that, creating a new XSL file that gives you the design and styling and organization that you want, um, and then just having a PCF file that kind of matches uh, matches the, the styling or that, that matches the number of regions you want to edit on a specific page, you know. So that, that's kind of what the process is looking like um, when we're talking about web pages inside of OU Campus nowadays. Um, so now the question kind of remains the same. How do we make more of these PCFs that contain page-specific content so we can have more pages that have specific content in them? Same thing. The next step is we would create a TMPL that looks 
very similar to what that PCF looks like, just without any page-specific content in it yet. And then ultimately, how do we get some of that starter page-specific content, you know, page title and some of the real basics? Once again, we're making a TCF file, and the combination of the user input from the TCF with the backbone of what the PCF will ultimately look like, those two things combined is what gives us our PCF. And same thing, how do we choose which TCF we want to use? We're going to choose the appropriate image, and that's what starts the whole process. So really, everything that's inside of this orange box doesn't change when we're making a, a web page leveraging XSL inside of OU Campus. Really, none of that is any different. Um, it just all kind of depends on what type of file that TMPL is ultimately generating. And in this case, since it's generating a, a PCF and it's using XSL to do our styling, that's where, that's where things are a little bit different. So if there's one thing that you guys take away from uh, this training Tuesday, just understand that the three files that we're going to talk about today, the image, the TCF, and the TMPL, they're all just generating a file inside of OU Campus. That's what we use to make new, more files inside of the system, and that file can be anything. It can be something simple, or it can be the starting of a new web page uh, that then uses XSL and stuff like that to, to move on for it. So with all of that in mind, I've talked about things conceptually enough. <laughs> Let's go ahead and take a look at how this all works inside of OU Campus and go from there. So what I've done is I've got OU Campus here inside of my uh, test environment. And what we're going to go ahead and do is, first of all, I want to make sure that you guys kind of understand those steps that I explained. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go inside of my, the pages list view. And, uh, you know, I've got this extra directory in here. And what I can do, you know, maybe I want to make a new page. So I click the New button. I get my images. So these are those thumbnail images I talked about. I click on one of these. It's going to bring up my form. This form right here is a TMPL, or I mean, sorry, ooh, excuse me. This form is being created by my TCF. And then ultimately, we never really see a visual analog of what the TMPL looks like. We just know that ultimately, once I make this page, it's going to give me something that looks like this PCF file. And if I go into the source code of this PCF file, let me go ahead and just change up my viewing right here. Everything that we see inside of here, this is just my page-specific content. And pretty much all of this stuff is what would be inside of the TMPL as well. The only exception is that, of course, I'm not going to have the training section for my page title already added in here. That's going to be kind of essentially waiting for me to put whatever I put inside of the TMPL. So, with all of that, let's go ahead and make our first template example. In this template example, we're going to start at the absolute basics. We're going to create a new template inside of OU Campus that allows us to generate a blank new page. Um, we got a quick little question from George asking if uh, I zoomed it in a little. Uh, hopefully that's a little bit better um, for you guys there. Um, okay, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is we're going to kind of get the ball rolling for my first uh, simple template within OU Campus. So before I do that, I need to know where I'm supposed to put my template files. Um, I already know because this is my, self, uh, my, my sandbox, but I'm going to walk through, you know, where, I'm, where you would go to find that out to start off with. So as an administrator, if you go into the Setup menu and you go to Sites, you can edit your site settings. And then if I scroll down to the bottom of production server FTP settings, I should see two settings here called template location and then template directory. Template location just tells me whether my template files are living on the staging server or on the production server. So we want to make sure, okay, well, I know I'm supposed to be looking in the staging server since they're set to local right now. 
And then this directory just tells me the file path for where I should be going to actually get that information. So right here, it's telling me that I need to go into underscore resources slash OU slash templates, and that's where all of my template files actually live. So let's go there. Content pages, underscore resources, OU, templates, and inside of there, I actually have a bunch of subdirectories. Uh, the system will still look inside of uh, subdirectories um, once you've defined the template directory. So, and if I were to hop into one of these, for example, say, for example, interior, there we go. Looks like I've got a bunch of files in here. So I've got one that's called, you know, underscore section dot gif. So there's my images. I've got a couple TCFs in here. And then I've also got TMPLs in here. So those are my three file types. Let's go ahead and create a new template and it'll be probably the most basic template you could possibly ever want to make. And I'm going to actually just put it at here at the root of template so we don't have any other template files that are confusing us. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to just start off by actually uploading a couple starter files that I brought into, into the system. Because right now, if I click the new button, I don't have the ability to actually make just a new blank file in the system just yet. So what we're doing right now is going to give us that ability. So what I've done is I've actually built some files uh, through an external text editor, and now I'm just going to upload them into the system to get started. So the first thing we need, of course, is we need an image. So I'm just going to drag this image into the system, and it's called underscore new file dot PNG, because ultimately what we want to do is we just want to make a new blank file. So I decided to call my image new file. And if I look at it, just a simple little new file image. All right, so that's step one. Step two is I need to create a TCF that is triggered once I select this image. So I'll upload this into here, underscore new file dot TCF. And if I go into this, it's, very, very, very basic. And don't worry, we will be looking at this uh, in just a little bit. So I'll come back to this and what all of the things that we see in here, what those all mean. And then the final thing is we have to essentially have a place for the user data that's going to be entered into our TCF. We need a place for that user data to go. So we need to have a TMPL in there as well. And if I go into the TMPL, you know, we'll see, we'll see a little bit more about that later. Um, Brandon, we do have a request to slow down a little just so people can follow along. Okay, cool. Um, and also I do want to remind people that this is recorded, so you'll be able to see it um, afterwards and rewatch it a bunch of times. And also in chat, if you're going to send a message via chat, address it to the presenter if you want Brandon to see it. If you send it to the host, then I see it. Yeah, um, so at this and, point I haven't seen any of the chats yet. Sorry yeah. about that. <laughs> And also, um, there's another request to say it's hard to read the code when the background is that dark. So maybe either okay. uh, change the color scheme or enlarge it. Okay. All right. So. Sounds you. good. <laughs> All right. So what I've done right now is I've just uploaded a bunch of files, and you're like, what did what did, what did Brandon just do? <laughs> so here's here's kind of what our what our process is so far. Um, I needed an image. And that image is what's going to ultimately show up when I click on the new button. So I've created that image. And then the next thing that I did is I created a TCF, which will be the form that shows up when I click that image ultimately. And then I needed a place for that user data to go ultimately. So the TMPL is our final step. The way that these, th these three things work together is that ultimately, Inside of OU Campus, the system will recognize, hey, there's a file that is called underscore new file dot TCF. And if there is an image that has the same file name, the system will link those two files together automatically. So that's how we kind of know that these two things are going to ultimately work together. When I click on this image, we know it's going to take me here because they have the same name at the end of the day. So um, with that, 
I'm just going to kind of talk a little bit about what these files, uh, what these files look like, and, and what what they come into play. So we already looked at the image. The image itself is just a thumbnail, and it's really pretty basic. So when we click on this, it's going to open up our TCF, and let's actually take a look at what that TCF is. So if we dive into here, and let me change my theme here, um, I'll just keep it at the default then. If the black background was hard to see, then I'll just keep it at the default one. So ultimately what a TCF is, is um, pretty, pretty straightforward. So I mentioned that it's a text file, but it almost <laughs> sort of kind of um, follows the uh, sort of kind of follows an XML markup standard. So um, there are certain things that you can do in order to have that kind of abide by those standards. Um, so the first thing is that all XML files need to have essentially a root node, um, which is kind of a, a single tag that is the kind of the parent tag for everything else that lives within the system. Um, so inside of the TCF, we do have one of those. So it's just called TCF. Everything inside of in, in this everything inside of this tag is what will start showing up when we go ahead and uh, when we go ahead and actually customize what that form is going to look like. Um, so we have a quick little question from Andres, and he was asking, "What are the dimensions for the PNG?" The dimensions can actually be anything you want. We recommend something that's relatively about 100 pixels by 100 pixels, but you don't have to have it be that small. It could be 150 by 150. Um, anything along those lines is fine. It doesn't even have to be square necessarily. Um, the files that I've found so far um, are square, um, but one quick little note is that uh, one quick little note is that there are um, I, I will I'll be pretty much taking all the files that we're working with today, and I'll be zipping them up and sharing them with Erica. So ultimately, once the recording uh, for this file or once the recording for this training has been put online and everything like that, um, we you guys can uh, download the zip and take a look at some of the exact files that I, I played around with today. So hopefully that'll be useful for you guys. Um, so anyways, inside of the TCF tag, kind of our, our beginning tag here, um, basically there's just a couple things that we need at the bare, bare minimum in order to have a TCF that actually works. And because we are creating about the simplest template you could possibly create right now, <laughs> um, th this is essentially the bare minimum. The first thing you need to do is you need to give it a title. And the title is what will show up when you click the new button and it gives you a title of the file or of the template underneath it. And it'll also show up at the top of the dialog box once you've actually selected the thumbnail image. So we just need to give it a name right here. So I've already gone ahead and given it a name of new file. Um, and that's really it. Maybe I could just go ahead and be more specific and say new blank file, something like that. So that's the first thing we always need. The second thing we always need is we need to reference that TMPL file. Because like I said, if we didn't have a TMPL file that was related to this TCF, all the user data that we are inputting into this form at the end of the day, it doesn't have any place to go, and ultimately it doesn't know what to create. <laughs> um, so you need to have some sort of reference to a TMPL file inside of the TCF. That's how the system knows where to take your user data and where to go ahead and put it. You basically just link the things up here inside of the TCF. So what we're doing is the way that we reference that is we build out a tag called template-list, and then inside of template-list, we have a tag called template. And the template tag has a bunch of these different, a uh, bunch of these different attributes. Oops, my bad. And I just like to kind of put them on their own line. Sometimes it's a little easier to kind of see them when I do that. And you know, ultimately, we're not working in a whole bunch of files, so I'm just going to go ahead and make the uh, code view a little bigger for you guys, too. Hopefully, that's helpful. So as we go through this here, doo -doo -doo, what we have is we have just a couple different, uh, couple different 
uh, attributes. So prompt prefix is just you know something that's easy to uh, put it as kind of a, a reference for what type of file we're generating there. And this is just you know once again a new file. The extension is an attribute that determines what actual file extension we are creating um, when we generate this new file. So this is kind of one of the first examples where we can see that a TMPL and a TCF and all of this stuff doesn't have to make a web page because ultimately we're telling what kind of file it to, to create using this extension attribute. So right now we're creating a .inc extension. Um, .inc is just uh, another file extension that can be used for kind of just standard HTML markup. INC is generally, I think, meant to stand for include. So within OU Campus, for example, we, we use INC for like our navigation files and other, other single files that are being included on multiple pages at once. So, but you could hypothetically change this to whatever you wanted and that would give it a different default file extension. But as we'll go ahead and see, we'll have the ability to change the file name and the extension once we actually open this TCF as, as a user. This publish attribute just says uh, no. What that means is that it will not automatically publish the file the minute that we create it, which is generally recommended because we want to have an opportunity to edit the file before we actually make it live on the live website. So publish equals no just creates it on the staging server, but doesn't automatically push it out over to the live site until we actually manually choose to publish it later on. Exclude-sitemap just says that we are going to automatically exclude this file from the sitemap that's being generated by OU Campus. Um, and exclude dash search, since it's also set to yes, that just is another thing that we are just excluding this new file from it from being indexed by OU Campus's internal search, which we call uh, advanced search, or you'll see quick search inside of uh, inside of the system. But ultimately, at the end of the day, it's just setting some default behaviors for what our file is going to behave like and how it's going to to look like um, in terms of you know things like its file extension. So. Some of these attributes are pretty basic. I mentioned, and I think there, there was a question earlier about, you know, what are all the possibilities for these? Um, there are quite a few. Um, documentation for that lives on the support site. So I'll just quickly take a second to hop over to the support site really quickly. Um, if you go to the support site, you can go into site development, which is where kind of more developer oriented topics live. And inside site development, there's going to be uh, an option over here called templating framework. And if you go to templating framework and uh, hop onto this uh, templating uh, menu over here, you should see TCF reference and TMPL reference. Um, the TCF reference page is going to essentially give you the breakdown for all of the different uh, code sections um, for that can make up a TCF as well as the options that can be within each one of those. So for example, right now we're editing the template list and specifically talking about the template tag, you know, going back here, we're at that template tag right there. So if I clicked on template, this little attributes menu right here tells me all the attributes that are possible that create as part of that template tag. So each one of these that are highlighted in blue right now as you can see, there are quite a few other options that you can play around with. So if you have some time, head over to the support site and check out these attributes and you can learn about what each one of them do and what kind of values they're supposed to accept and, and things like that. Cool. So with that out of the way, um, you can also use this to find out more about other portions of the TCF, which we may look at later. But in any case, once we've kind of covered this, we have the template tag that's got some basic options for how the file is going to behave. But then really what lives inside of the template tag is just a reference to a specific TMPL file. So we're saying take this information, anything that the users need to provide when they use this template and send that over specifically to this TMPL as the background or the backbone for the new page or the new file that we're about to create. So since we're telling that we're supposed to send data over to here, let's see what that looks like. So if I hop back out really quickly, well, let me save this. 
All right. So if I hop back out, it's sending me to newfile.tmpl. What does that look like? What's inside of this? Nothing. The reason why there's nothing in here is because our, end, our, our desire at the end of the day is to create a blank file. So, of course, <laughs> if we want to make a blank file, we don't need to pre-fill any sort of default information because that kind of defeats the purpose of making a completely blank file. So this is why this is as basic as you can get. We're not even putting any starter content inside of this TMPL file. All we're doing is just saying, hey, I want the capability to make a brand new file that's sparkly clean, that has absolutely nothing in it, and I want to use it, I want to do it entirely within OU Campus. So that's kind of the basics for what we're doing in our first file here. With that in mind, let's go ahead and actually see what that looks like um, now that we've brought these files into the system. So they live here and they all live on the staging server. I don't need to do any sort of publishing for it. OU Campus can read from the staging server internally. So I don't even need to have these checked out anymore. Now if I click new, notice that we don't see that new, new file, that new blank file template showing up just yet. And the reason for that is because I talked about template groups earlier. I have a template group that is enforced on this directory, which means that it's only showing me kind of a, a sublisting of the templates that are available. If I decide to hop into setup and go to setup templates, this is where we're going to see a full list of all the templates that exist within my entire site. And you'll notice there's our new file right there. So there's our image. We know it's intrinsically linked with the TCF because they have the same file name. There's that title that we created. It's showing up right here. And at this point, what I can do is I can go to template groups. And I'm just going to go ahead and say template groups. Right now, I know that the default template group, for example, is the one that is currently being applied to the directory I was looking in. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and edit this template group and add the new template that I just made into the group so it can go ahead and actually show up for me. So I'm just going to say a new blank file, save. Now that file lives in there. And I can go ahead and if I go back to my system here, if I click new now, I can see there's my uh, new blank file template. So let's actually go ahead and see what that is actually creating. If I click on it, it's really basic. <laughs> All it needs to do is what's my file name going to be? And then this override existing option and this access group option, these are just a couple options that are added by the system, even though they weren't part of the TCF. Um, just the ability to, if I'm making a page, can I have it overwrite things? And I can also set the access group for the page the minute I create it. Um, but really what I'm trying to do is it's just going to give us the ability to create a new file name. So you'll notice that inside of the TCF when I pr it asked me for the extension and I said INC, that's why it's listed as untitled.inc right here. If I had given it a different file extension, we would have seen a different thing after the dot. So if I wanted to, I could just go ahead and say test.inc and I click Create. Now we've gone ahead and created that file called test.inc, and if I look in the source code, it's a completely blank file. If I wanted to, I could just go straight ahead and start playing with it. So while we're here, just one more quick little variation. I mentioned that maybe I wanted to not create an INC file by default, instead I wanted to do something else. Well, the easy way to do that is if I click on my new file.tcf. Oh, it switched me back to <laughs> dark. All right, let's go back to the light here. Let's just give it a different extension. Maybe we'll give it an extension of HTML now instead. And as soon as I save that, And I go back to the template, and I choose that same template again. Notice that now, instead of untitled.html, it gives me untitled.inc. 
I mean, sorry, <laughs> reverse that. <laughs> Instead of untitled.inc like we saw before, now it's untitled.html. And in the same way, if I wanted to click create, it's going to still do the same thing. If I go to the same, if I go to the source code, once again, it's still just blank. So we have now gone ahead and created the world's most simple template. <laughs> it is just creating a completely blank file and we can actually use that blank file to make improvements upon what we've already just done. So I'm actually just gonna get rid of those two sample files here because they are literally nothing. <laughs> we'll get rid of those two. Okay, so there's our simple example. We used the TCF TMPL process to make something other than a web page. We made something very simple, more simple than a web page. Now let's turn up the heat a little bit and we're going to go ahead and essentially recreate the template that allows me to make a new interior page. So we already have one that's in the system, but I'm gonna go ahead and essentially build off of the three files that I just created and we're gonna go ahead and uh, you know make something that looks exactly like this. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is if I wanted to, I could hypothetically edit these files and have them look a little bit different. But really at this point, I wanna make sure that I can keep these. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually use my new template to give me a new blank file. And this time I'm gonna go ahead and call this blank file underscore new page dot TCF. So now instead of just a new blank file, I'm gonna make a new web page. that's my goal. So we'll click create, and you can see it takes me directly to the source editor, and right now it's blank. What I'm just gonna go ahead and do is I've actually already built out the TCF, and just for the interest of time, we don't have enough time to you know, write it by hand right now, but I'm gonna go ahead and essentially walk you through the extensions upon the basic TCF we already built and how that's a little bit different. So let's go ahead, I'm just gonna copy this from my uh, pre-built file already. I'm just gonna go ahead and paste it into the system. So you're like, oh my gosh, wait a second, what did he just do? So let's just back up a quick second. First thing we did, I got ahead and it's still a TCF. So I'm still gonna have my opening tag of TCF. I still need to have a title and I gave it a title of new page. Now this time, what I'm doing is we have this extra tag here called variable list. What variable list does is it gives me the ability to actually ask a couple questions of my user aside from just what the file name is. If we go back to compare, oh yeah, let me save. If we go back to quickly compare what we saw before in new file.tcf, or new file.tcf, I just had template list and all it did was ask me what my file name was. It didn't ask me any more questions. That form was, was about as simple as I could get it. Well now, since I'm making a new web page, I wanna ask a couple more questions such as, what do I want the page title to be? What do I want the description to be? And things like that. So because I wanna ask more questions, I have to increase the complexity of my TCF. So the way that I ask those questions is by adding in variables. So this variable dash list inside of the system is essentially the tag that allows me to ask those questions and then each individual question I want to ask is gonna be inside of it and it's gonna be called variable. So each question will be its own variable. And at this point, it's kind of the same thing as uh, inside of the template tag. Depending on what sort of default behaviors I wanted for each one of those questions, I'm gonna put in these attributes that belong to the tag and each of those attributes correspond to you know a different functionality. So. For example, this first one here called section. A variable section is going to give me kind of like a page heading up at the top, right above this question. And it can, that, that page heading can sort of kind of determine, okay, this is the group of questions that I'm gonna be asking about right now. So actually let's go ahead and uh, essentially break this down by just pieces. Um, so I'm actually gonna get rid of the rest of these variables and we will just go ahead and have it be just a single variable here. Uh, you know what, actually no, 
I realized that that's not a good idea because we should talk about it holistically. So section is going to give me a page heading. One thing that we need to have for every variable is we need to have a unique reference to it. We can't have the same, we can't have multiple questions be referenced kind of as the same thing. The system needs to know that the questions are distinct. So the way that we determine that is by creating this name attribute and we just give it a descriptive name. So in this case, at the end of the day, we will be ultimately asking for what my page title is gonna be. And so it makes sense that the unique reference for it is gonna be called title because we're asking about the title. The type attribute determines what the question is gonna look like. So type of text would just mean that it's a simple text field. So all the user needs to do is write in some text. The prompt is going to be the title of the question essentially. So in this case, it's gonna say page title and it's gonna show up kind of right, right over to the left-hand side of the text field itself. Alt right here, this is just gonna be simple helper text. So we just have a little bit of extra descriptive text that falls underneath it that um, you know, the user can use to understand more about what they're being asked to do. And that's the general structure of each one of these questions. You need to have a name, you need to have a type, and then kind of all this other stuff is you know, additional, but very recommended. It wouldn't really be very informative to not have a, a title for what the question is, you know? Um, so ultimately, we have all of these attributes that live inside of the variable, you know, all of the properties for how the question is going to behave, but we don't have an answer to the question. That's why the variable tag is empty. You know, that's why there's nothing sitting where my cursor is right here, because we want the user to be able to write what they're actually going to answer the question to be. We're not going to pre-fill an answer in for them. So if we go through the rest of these questions, I'll just kind of quickly tell you what they are. In the interest of time, I wanna go ahead and work through this here. So we can see that our next question is gonna be asking for the description. So that's why the name is called description. It's still a text field, but this time we have this extra thing called rows. And that just says, hey, make this text field a little bit taller than just a single line. So that's my other question. And then I've got two other questions here that are determining uh, kind of aspects of the page. So now I get the option to determine whether I'm going to have a three column layout, a one column layout, or perhaps a two column layout. So I have kind of some sidebar columns apparently that I can turn off and on right when I make the page. So I can inject a little bit of variety um, even when using the same template. So these two variables right here just give me those two options to turn on and off those columns. And we'll take a look at what that looks like once we save. And then really the two final things here, this one's actually really important. This question is called PCF file name and it's gonna ask me for the prompt of file name. If you remember when we made our first template, it actually gave me the full file name. It was untitled.inc or test.html. It actually gave me the extension in addition to what comes before the dot. What we're gonna be doing when we wanna make web pages is we don't want users to automatically or accidentally uh, get rid of the file extension because obviously that's gonna you know, change the type of file that they're gonna create or make it unusable. So what we do is we actually prevent the extension from being shown and we just prompt them for what comes before the dot in the form itself. So that's what this question is asking. And then the next question is some aspects relating to navigation. Basically, you know, do you want this page to be added um, as part of, uh, as part of the uh, navigation in this directory. And I wish I had a little bit more time to talk about the intricacies of how navigation works and things like that, but for now, we'll just leave that be and we just know that it's an option. So all of these variables, these are all of the questions that we wanted to ask people. Now we move into something that might be a little bit more familiar to us it's going into the template list. Because once again, now we're asking a lot of questions. We're getting a lot of data from the user and we still need a place to have that information be, uh, we need a place for that information to go. <laughs> so we're gonna put a template tag in here saying, hey, take that user data and put it into 
the, uh, you know, put it into uh, the certain kind of starter file. So um, basically we have kind of some simple stuff here. So this time we have a new attribute and this one's called file name. And you'll notice, um, actually it's not a new, or no, it is, it is a new one. We didn't use it in the last one. So this one called file name, it's actually grabbing the information from our question earlier. So we asked them right up here, actually, what's the name of the file? Do we, what, what, do you, what do we want the name of the file to be? So ultimately, once we fill in that information, we need to actually tell the system to use that file name. So that's what we use this attribute here called file name for. And so the double curly bracket or the single curly brackets that encapsulate PCF file name right here, that just says, hey, OU Campus, grab the user data from right here up from this question and put it in right over here. So file name, we're gonna add that. Display file name is set to no because we already asked for their file name, so we don't need to ask it again. So displaying file name right here just essentially means that there's not going to be an additional field that asks the same file name question that we already had. This time, we're giving it a new extension and we're giving it an extension of PCF because like I said, PCF is how we make our web pages. So of course we wanna make sure that it always makes a PCF. And then the next option here is called preferred redirect. And preferred redirect just essentially means when I make this page, take me to that page directly so I can start editing it. So at this point, I just wanna say preferred redirect equals yes. So that way I always just get taken to the page that I've just created. And then once again, this just deals with navigation. So at this point now, we're sending the system to go to a different file. Instead of going to the underscore new file .tmpl, which was ultimately blank, <laughs> we are gonna have it send to a file instead that is called underscore new page. So, if you recall, we actually haven't built this yet. So that's what we're gonna be doing next. We're gonna collect all of this data from the user form and we're gonna tell, hey, OU Campus, put it or send it over here. And what our next process is, is to actually go ahead and, and create that. And then the one final other thing that is showing up in this TCF file that we haven't looked at already is what we call the navigation list. And this once again, just deals with uh, some more aspects of navigation. If we have a little bit of time at the end, I'll, I'll kind of revisit this really quickly. Um, but I just wanna make sure that we go through all three examples first, because that's really the most important that you get the key concepts. Navigation is kind of on top of that. So really, we've asked all the questions we wanna ask, and now we just need to essentially establish the baseline for what our file should look like so we can ultimately get that file created. So I'm gonna hit save. Our new page.tcf is ready to go. One other quick thing is, of course, we still need an image. So I actually have an image that I've created for it as well. So I'll just make that right now since we wanna make sure they have the same file names, new page.gif new page.tcf. It doesn't actually matter what file extension you use for the image. It can be a PNG, it can be a JPEG, it can be a GIF, you know, whatever you want. So in any case, if I click on new page, that's what our template thumbnail is gonna go ahead and look like. So like I said, final step is we wanna go ahead and make our TMPL file uh, that it will accept all of the data that we've just asked users to give us. So I'll just use my same new blank file template and we will call it underscore new page dot tmpl because that's what we're telling the TCF to go and find. So of course we need to make it line up with that. All right, create once again, empty so far. I'm gonna go ahead and just grab that from my, what I've written already. and I'm gonna go ahead and just paste it in here. So, what I just pasted in, if you have looked at the source code of a PCF file before, you'll notice that this starts looking a whole lot like it. Let me just actually go ahead and pull up 
one of my interior pages inside of my test environment so we can go ahead and see actually. All right, so I've got this page right here, you know, my basics. If I go into the source code of this, this is what the source code of just like some random PCF file looks like. And if I switch tabs, this is the source code of what my new page.tmpl file looks like. Pretty darn similar, you know, just a couple of differences in indentation over here, but there we go, even, even more similar now. <laughs> so what's the difference between a TMPL and a PCF? So if you'll notice, inside of a PCF, we have right up at the top, we have a reference to an XSL file. So this is actually a quick little aside. Um, I mentioned earlier that XSL is how we determine what creates, um, what creates our different page layouts. So you'll notice that right now the system, this, this web page, this PCF file is saying, hey, look at this interior.xsl file. This is what you're gonna use to style my content and make my page look like my page. If I go over into the TMPL file, we've got the same thing. So the way that uh, a page template inside of OU Campus uh, is set up to create you know, a certain type of page is essentially you just put in an XSL reference into the TMPL file. So the, so the page knows what it's going to be styled like the minute that it's created. So, but once again, it's not the template files that are actually doing the uh, page layout definition, it's all just the XSL. So like I said, if you want to ever make new page layouts or new page types, that look different from any other design that you currently have in your site. It's a matter of making XSL that creates that design and then building out everything that we're working with today. As opposed to, for example, you know, building out the template pages themselves that are gonna be doing this. Um, so anyways, enough of that quick little aside. Um, if I go to the PCF file inside of the page properties, um, you know, we have our different parameters that we can modify. Um, and in this example, you know, we have something that's like the page heading. And inside of the PCF, the page heading is already filled out because it's a page that exists, so we needed to provide a heading for it. So this is what it looks like in the PCF. Inside of the more generic TMPL file, every page, you know, we don't know what the page title or the page heading is gonna be because, you know, it, it needs to still be made. And so you'll notice that inside of that same parameter, we have this extra thing called echo var, and that's really hard to see when I highlight it. Um, my apologies about the, uh, the styling here. I wonder if I could find a, okay, I'm just gonna switch to this really quickly here so we can see it highlighted in pink a little bit more uh, visibly. But essentially, we have a parameter tag and now we have this thing called an echo var equals title. So this markup right here is how OU Campus knows where to put the data that the user entered into the form, where it actually is gonna be going inside of my base or my, my boilerplate uh, page, you know. So we asked for what the page title was going to be inside of the TCF file. And ultimately we gave it a name, you know, that question that variable was named title inside of the TCF. And this little thing, which looks sort of like an HTML comment, but the one difference is that it's not gonna have a space between the final dash at the beginning. Um, and then there's this uh, percent sign echo var. And then it's essentially just saying, hey, grab the data that was put inside of that variable. So whatever the user places inside of that question on the new form, it's going to essentially be added here in place of this echo var as soon as we create the page itself. Um, let's see, so Paul's actually asking, quick little aside here, Paul's asking, can we have another Training Tuesday as a part two of this, not running through it so fast with TMPL and XSL? Um, yeah, sure, absolutely. I, I mean, I'm always happy to make a, another training session uh, that goes for what you're needing. You know, Paul, I might actually uh, hit you up over email to kind of figure out what would be uh, valuable to cover in that one. 
Um, that's one of the kind of things that's interesting about templating an OU campus is that, you know, not talking about XSL with this, notwithstanding, the TMPL stuff really integrates in with like the TCF and all that sort of stuff. So it's hard to talk about templating if you don't talk about all the files at once. But I'm happy to definitely see what we can do to potentially build off of this and maybe uh, get it down to even more of the basics later on. But absolutely, um, since you put it in the Q&A, we've got your email, so I'll be reaching out um, and we'll kind of see what, see what ideas we could think of there. Um, so really, going back to the, to the TMPL file here, really the only thing that makes this file different than a, a PCF file that's at the end of, at, uh, at the at the page level, you know, one that's already been created, is you're just going to have these little uh, these little references here that says, "Hey, grab whatever the user put as the answer to your question, and put the answer to that question right here within the code of our generic file." So what I have is I have a couple of these built out inside of the system. So, you know, asking the question of, okay, page title, put it here. Put our answer for whether we're turning on the left column, put that here. Here's our answer for whether we're going to turn on the right column, put that answer right here. Once again, we're actually reusing the same piece of data one more time, and it's going to say, hey, what's the... Uh, use that page title and actually have it be the, the title of the page. And one more thing, hey, what's the description? What did the user put in there? Put the answer right in there. And really, that's it. And then we just have a bunch of blank editable regions that people can go through and play around with later on. So the relationship between a TCF and a TMPL is TCF asks the questions, TMPL grabs the answers to those questions and puts them in the right place and then when they're combined, you have a brand new ready to go web page. So now this is saved. I now have, once again, three new files image, questions, answers. So once again, let's go ahead and test that out. If we go to set up templates, we can confirm that the system has found our new page. That's why it's showing up here in this list. We can see that that's given the name right there. That's looking good. And then final step is let's go ahead and just add it to our template group so we can go ahead and take it from there. So if I go into default again, I'm just going to activate this new template so it can show up for us. And we'll hit save. And now if we're... Uh, back in here, for example, and I click on new, I have a new option that shows up here. If I click on it, now you can see I'm asking a lot of questions. So here are the questions that I've got going on here. It's going to ask me for my page title. So I could put in testing page. It's asking me for my description. You'll notice that it's still a text field, but it's a little taller. That's because of that rows attribute before. Asking whether or not the left column or the right column gets turned on or off. You know, we have those questions here. Right now, I'm going to just leave them both on. And then here's that option where it's asking me for the file name. So I can put my file name in here, but you'll notice that I don't need to put in the .pcf part for me. It's just asking me for what's coming before that. The .pcf doesn't even become part of this question anymore because we're doing the extension for it for the user instead of asking them to write the extension themselves. All right, so in this case, I can just go ahead and call it testing page, click create. And now it took me to my new page. It's now called a PCF. And if I look at the source code, all of that same stuff that we saw before, but now, instead of that echo var that was highlighted in pink earlier, now we actually have the page title that I wrote right there. And in the same vein, answer to the question if I have the left column on is right there. The answer to the question of if I have the right column on is right there. And there's my page title once again. I didn't put any information inside of the description, which is why this is still blank. 
if I had filled it out and asked or and answered that question when it was being asked, then I would have seen this answer added right here. And then, you know, all of my blank editable regions that I had before. So pretty much what we did is we used the same three files and we just built upon them to ask some more questions and, ask, you know, put in a little bit of different information. And now we have a brand new web page. And the reason why we know it's a brand new web page and it looks the way that it looks is because of that XSL reference that we saw before. That XSL reference right there is everything that we needed to do. Huh? Oh, right, I know what was going on there. The, the page is trying to pull from a, something else because I put it inside of the underscore resources folder. So that's a, <laughs> a simple example there. But in any case, we have the page and everything's looking good there. Okay, so um, now what we can do is we could take this even one more step further, which is uh, where we get into sort of the extra complex options, is maybe I don't want to just create a simple new page Maybe I want to go ahead and put that new page inside of a folder, or I want to go ahead and do something even more advanced than that. Maybe I want to go ahead and actually build out a whole new subdirectory um, within my site. I don't want to just make a simple new page. I want to go ahead and make a couple new pages and um, a couple folders, and all of that I want to just do in one fell swoop. Um, and that is where things get extra cool. What I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to once again kind of build off of the page that we just made before. First thing I'll do is I'll, I'll upload another image, and this one's going to be called a new section. So we have a new simple page, and that's just a single web page. And now we can go one more. Um, level and we'll make a new section which is going to be a folder with a page inside of it. So we're actually going to create the same page that we just made, but now we're actually going to put that page in a folder pretty much. So there's our image, got a new, new image that we can use for there. Next thing we can do is let's go ahead and uh, take our existing TCF and we're just going to modify it slightly. So I'm actually not going to upload another file or anything like that. I'm going to go ahead and select this new page right here. And I'm just going to go ahead and click Save As. So that effectively allows me to save a copy of this um, with a different file name. So I'm just going to call this New Section. So now I've hit save, and effectively, if I go back really quickly to OU Campus, we can see that now I've got a new TCF file here, and I haven't adjusted my, my original one right here. But at this point, new section still looks exactly like new, uh, uh, still looks like new, new page. <laughs> um, but what we want to do is, since we're, um, since we're going to go ahead and actually take this page and put it inside of a new subdirectory, um, and things like that, I have to ask a couple different questions. The first and most important one is, if I'm going to make a new subdirectory, what do I want that subdirectory to be named? So let's go ahead and ask that question. Since we're asking another question, we need to go ahead and add another variable inside of the variable list, because once again, that's how we actually ask questions. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is actually, first of all, I'm going to change my title because right now it's not a new page anymore, I'm gonna make a new section. So here's my first question that I'm gonna go ahead and ask. It's gonna be called directory name or dir name. And the prompt is gonna be saying directory name. Enter the directory name that will be visible in OU Campus and in the URL. No special characters or spaces. So I'm just right here asking, what do I want my new folder to be named? So with that in mind, and we've gone ahead and asked that question. The other thing I want to ask is, first of all, uh, what do I want the page still to be named? So maybe instead of calling it general page setup, I'm going to go ahead and call it an index page setup. 
The reason I'm calling it an index page is because when we make a new directory inside of OU Campus, the first page that lives inside of any new directory should be called index, um, or you know, in some cases, default. Um, but in, in my test environment's case, it should be called uh, index. And uh, once I've done that, I'm just gonna ask what the page title is gonna be. So page title is done. I'm still gonna ask for the description of the index page. So those things are already done. Now the next thing I wanna do is I'm just gonna still have the option to determine the page type. So right now what I'm just doing here is I'm just going to still give users the option to determine what that index page is gonna look like, whether or not it has some extra columns that are turned on or off. Once that is done though, actually really nothing too else, nothing too much else changes here. Actually there is one more thing. So this question right here, if you remember when we made our original new page, it's asking me what's my file name going to be? Well if you remember just a second ago when I talked about making a new section, we always need to have our first page be called index or in some cases default. So if every page that we're making using, the, uh, if every index page that we make needs to be called index, we shouldn't really be asking the users to give us a file name because we already know that it needs to be called index. So what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna ask this question anymore. So I'm just gonna delete this variable. Deleting that variable means that the user will not be prompted with the question of what do you want the file name to be? So. In that case, we're good to go by just deleting it right there. And let's see, I don't think I need to do anything else there. Great. So now we move on. We're done with our questions. There really wasn't much that we needed to change. We just needed to ask what the directory was going to be called, and we needed to not ask what the file name was going to be called. That's all we changed there. But now we're going to introduce the final major piece of a TCF. If you're using a TCF to actually make a folder inside of OU Campus, you can use what we call a directory list. And actually, I'm just going to go ahead and type this here. So it's going to be called directory-list. One other quick thing that's nice about OU Campus, if you're working inside of a TCF file, the system knows that and can do some code autocomplete for you. So um, going back to the question at the beginning of, you know, some of the things about, hey, what, uh, uh, what, what available variables and attributes and stuff you can put inside of these files, um, the source code editor inside of OU Campus is actually going to do some of that for you. So I'm starting to type in directory list. That's all I need to do. I'll be done with that. So this kind of follows the same format as like variable list and template list. It's just kind of a containing tag. Um, is so, and then inside of that, for every new folder that we're going to create um, as a result of using this template, we're gonna have a directory tag inside of it. Just like that, directory. Okay, or actually, sorry, my apologies. Inside of that, you need to do one other thing. It's called parent. I should have listened to the code autocomplete. <laughs> Silly me. All right, so we're going to call it parent, and then we're going to give it a name, and we'll just call it current folder. And then pass this right here. Okay, so what did I just do? Basically, I just said um, we're going to create uh, some some new folders, and this little parent right here is just saying, okay, start making new folders in whatever folder I'm currently in. So going back to here, I'm inside of training dash section. That's the folder inside of OU Campus that I'm in right now. When I click upload or when I click new, and I say, you know, choosing a, a new section template or something like that that little parent command of current folder just says start making that folder inside of whatever I'm currently in, which is right now training section. So this just establishes a, a you know, where am I right now and start going from there <laughs> as opposed to just anywhere else inside of my site. We need to tell the system to just build out stuff where I'm actually currently looking. And then inside of, once we've kind of established where it's starting from, then we can just go ahead and say directory. 
and we can give that a name. New folder. So it's saying inside of my current folder, now we're going to use this directory tag to make a new one. And I can actually just go ahead and finish out the rest of this because I have it built out already. There we go. So quick explanation of what I'm doing here. Inside of wherever I click the new button, make a new thing, give that new folder just an internal reference of new underscore folder. Force lowercase just makes sure that whatever file name I create is always going to be, or whatever folder name I create is always going to be lowercase. Generally speaking, that is a um, that's a, a, a good idea. <laughs> um, so force lowercase equals yes is always kind of a, a nice little help right there. And then the name of it, you know, the directory itself, we asked for that name in the questions. So that's why we do bracket dir name because up here at the top we asked for what do you want that directory name to be? So this is just a place where the question and the answer are actually being added into the same file. You know, we asked what the uh, folder name was going to be, and this is where we're telling the system how to make that folder. Um, Angela French actually has a question here. She was asking, when would you, when would you make a folder in a location other than the parent? Um, generally speaking, there's not very many situations why you wouldn't want to make a folder in a place other than where you're at currently, um, but the system just needs to essentially know that. Um, we'll actually go ahead and extend upon this example one more time after I finish with this to show you where you can essentially uh, kind of do some nesting folders. So you wouldn't really want to put it anywhere aside from where you're at, but you could dive, you could drill in deeper. Um, so we'll take a look at that in a second. But generally speaking, yeah, you're, you're not going to like, I, I click the new button inside of academics and it makes a new page inside of financial aid. <laughs> that probably wouldn't be an idea that would be very good. <laughs> um, but the system just needs to know that. Okay. So at this point I have now said, hey, OU campus, don't just make a page, make a folder. And then once it's made that folder, now we can essentially say, hey, make a page. So all I need to do now is I'm going to have my template list again. I'm going to use this template tag to generate a new file. And I'm just going to go ahead and copy all of this information in here. All right, let's go ahead and just grab this and replace what we had before with this. Okay, so here's what this is. First of all, we have a new attribute inside of template and this one's called destination. This is just a place for us to uh, be very specific about where we want this new page to be created. Because we're making this new page inside of a subfolder that we just created right up here, we need to tell the system that. So. That's what we're using this little bracket new uh, underscore folder for, is just like what we're doing here. So the system is essentially saying, hey, you know that new folder that you made right up here? The new page that I'm making is going to go inside of it. So that's what destination does. Once again, now we have file name. But this time, instead of it being uh, it accepting an answer that's going to be specific per user, now we're just automatically going to say index. It's always going to be titled indexed. We're not prompting the user for that answer anymore. It's just going to always be that. A couple other options, these display file name, display group, display overwrite, just uh, prevents the system from trying to display those to the user. Um, display those options. We don't want those options to show up for our people, so we're just saying display equals no. But I would encourage you, if you grab these source files and want to play around with them yourself, um, you know, change those to yes and see what it does. And then conversely, since we are making a web page, we know that its file name is going to be indexed, and since it's a web page, it needs to be extension of PCF. Force destination equals yes just essentially means if this file hasn't been made already, make sure it's being made. But in this case, we should be good because we already made it up here. 
And then preferred redirect once again is just saying, take me to the new file that I just generated at the end of the day. And then ultimately, we're actually going ahead and using the same page. So, you know, even though some of these options up here are different in terms of where the file is ultimately going to be put, we're still using this page right here to be what creates it. So our, our index page in this case is still just a standard interior page. Um, you know, in another hypothetical example, maybe I always wanted my index page to be a landing page instead. So I would just reference the TMPL file that generates my landing pages as opposed to my interior pages. But in this example, I'm just using the same exact page that I made before, but now I'm putting it inside of a folder. And there's actually one other thing that we can do, generally speaking, if we are making a new section of our web page, or uh, if we're making a new section of our website, and we want it to be, uh, you know, we want it to actually work in terms of navigation and things like that. We also want to generate a new navigation file. Um, this just goes, kind of goes back to like how OU Campus works in terms of there's a, uh, you know, every, every folder within the system has its own navigation file to allow for nesting navigation and stuff. Um, and so because we're making another folder, we need to make another navigation file. So, um, our main page that we're generating is still, you know, still our new page that we just played around with already. But now we're actually going to make another template file here called navigation.tmpl. And it's kind of doing some of the same stuff. It's making sure that the new navigation file that we're making is putting it inside of the same folder that our new index page goes and all that sort of stuff. Um, but essentially, the fact that we are referencing two TMPLs within the same TCF means that we are going to make two files with one form. So we're going to click one image, we're going to fill out one form, and then the system is just going to grab the data that we're putting in that one form, and it's going to put it in two different files. So every time that we have another template tag right here inside of a TCF, that means we make a file. So Multiple template tags mean that we make multiple files in all in one fell swoop. So hypothetically, um, I know of an example where someone actually went ahead and they built one single TCF and it generates like 12 files all at once, which is pretty impressive, which essentially means that they just have 12 of these template tags that live inside of that TCF. That's all they're doing. Um, and those files could be whatever they wanted. So in any case, all of what I've done here at this point is really all just going back to the idea of we are putting some files inside of a new directory as opposed to just where they're currently located. And then we can just go ahead and save. And because we are not referencing a different TMPL file, we don't need to make anything else at this point. Um, you know, I don't need to generate a new TMPL because we're taking advantage of the one that I already have. Um, and then the navigation template file. In this quick example, it already exists. So hypothetically, I might need to make this, but uh, in this case, I already have one inside of my inside of my side navigation or inside of my sandbox. So. In this case, when I'm making a new section, I really only need image and TCF because we're already leveraging this file right up here as where that data goes. So just to wrap up here, I'm going to go once again to set up templates. We can confirm. New section is showing up right there. There's our image. We'll add it into template groups. Click on that checkbox right there. All right, that's saved. And if I go inside of OU Campus and I click on New, there's our option showing up here. And slightly different in how I'm in, in the questions that are being asked. So now it's going to ask me for the directory name. And it'll ask me for this sort of stuff. 
Same information there. Didn't prompt me for an index page. Oh, you know what? Let me go ahead and actually just make navigation again. All right, there we go. Sorry, we should be good now. Okay, now if I click Create, ta-da! Now, once again, we still have the same interior page that we had before, but look, you can see that it lives inside of its own subfolder now. And if I go back, look at this, it also generated a new side navigation. So, this is where I was at before, inside of this template. And that's where testing is, and that's the new stuff that I just made. So really what I wanted to do there was just kind of show you how we can extend um, kind of the basic single page creation, and we can turn it into multiple page creation or multiple folder creation and things like that. Um, I know we've gone a little longer than I was uh, sort of expecting to today, but kind of a lot of information, so I wanted to make sure we went um, just, uh, you know, in enough detail to actually make it useful um, as opposed to glossing over any sort of key concept there. Um, with the files that I've created, um, I actually have created a couple extra variations onto the new section template that have slight differences from what we went through over here in the, in the call. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to kind of have both of those versions so you can kind of compare and contrast how the two source files are different and what kind of differences they create on, you know, when you actually use those templates. So just in the interest of time, I'm not going to demo those um, during this, but if you guys want to download the source files um, for what I was using to work with today, you can be able to use those to, to leverage um, how, those, how those things all work. So. We will go ahead and wrap up there. But before I do that, I just want to kind of quickly recap what we talked about today. So um, what we'll be doing is there are three files, and those three files work together in order to allow us to have new stuff show up inside of this new content dialog box that we've been seeing so much today. The three files are an image, a TCF, and a TMPL, the TCF and the image need to have the same file name. That's how they're linked together. And inside of the TCF, you essentially just put the name of whatever TMPL you want to send to. There are a lot of things that you can do with these three files when they combine their forces together. But just keep in mind that ultimately, the TCF TMPL relationship doesn't necessarily just make web pages. It can make whatever you want, just as long as you build out the basic structure inside of the TMPL and you give it the appropriate extension inside of the TCF. Once you do get into the realm of making web pages, though, just remember that ultimately these three files are not what create your page layouts, they're just referencing the page layouts that you have created inside of your XSL files. But if you want to go ahead and make more kind of variations using the same XSL, you can make more templates uh, in order to do that. Even as a quick example, if I click on the new button right here, you notice how I have this interior page template right here, but I also have these templates right here that are still making interior pages, but they just have essentially uh, predefined whether it's going to be a one column layout, a three column layout, a two column layout. All, fought, all five of these files are ultimately still using the same TMPL. I mean, uh, or, yeah, they're all using the same TMPL. It's just they have pretty much not given the user the choice of choosing, do I want to turn the left column on or do I want to turn the right column on? So that's kind of an example of having multiple templates within OU Campus using the same 
TMPL or using the same XSL. So that's kind of one of those things in there. If you want to know about all of the capabilities uh, that exist within um, each one of these variables and the templates and things like that, there's a whole bunch of them. I definitely encourage you to, first of all, just work inside of OU Campus. Uh, if you're updated to the newest version of OU Campus, I think once you got past version 10.5, um, the code completion is available and it'll give you kind of a listing of the attributes that you can use. If you want to learn about those attributes, go to the support site and you can even just search TCF reference or TMPL reference in the search bar right here. And if you scroll down, you should see a bunch of these that are called attributes, and that'll give you a description of all the possibilities that you can add into each of those tags. So with that, that pretty much wraps up what I have for you guys today. There is so much that you can learn and so much you can play around with in this topic. I've just barely scratched the surface, and I could talk for another an hour and a half if I wanted to. But you guys' time is valuable as well, so I want to make sure that I value that. At the end of the day, we're pretty much wrapped up. If there are any other final questions, thank you very much for that. Um, I'll just kind of leave this up. If there are any other questions, I can go ahead and uh, I can uh, answer those as we go. But uh, if there aren't any questions, just keep in mind, our next Training Tuesday is going to be the last Tuesday of July, July 25th. We're going to be talking about switching over to HTTPS, so what that involves for um, getting your production server, you know, what that means to get everything ready over to HTTPS. And once you've got your production server squared away, what you need to do in OU Campus to make sure that all that is good as well. So I'll leave the floor open for any additional questions at the end of everything. Thank you guys in advance for all of your patience and your attention and your great questions today. Um, and I'm happy to answer any more that come along. Um, I've got one specifically from Angela that she was just asking um, or kind of adding a suggestion. A good follow-up to this would be how the XSL files relate or act upon the PCF file to create the final page. That is a great suggestion. Um, XSL is definitely, you know, it's like essentially, you know, it's a programming language. Um, there's a lot of ways that it can act upon the final page. Um, maybe there's a way that we can condense it down to in an hour-long discussion, um, but XSL is pretty complex. Uh, and there's a lot of things that you can talk about, and they're all kind of interlinked. <laughs> um, so we will uh, we'll look at to see if there's a capability for us. But yeah, absolutely. You know, I spent so much time alluding to making different page layouts in XSL. Um, it's definitely something that is is good to know about. So thank you for that, Angela. All right, well, I'm not seeing any other questions come in either. So unless there's any sort of last minute um, quick topics, that wraps it up for June's Training Tuesday. Thank you everybody for attending. And as Brandon said, our next Training Tuesday will be July 25th. We'll be talking about switching your site over to HTTPS. All right, thank you everybody and have a great rest of your day. Take care everyone.